mode. Hello, everybody. My name is Elisa Baum, and I am Percona's Director of Product Marketing. We'll begin in just a moment, but first I'd like to conduct just a bit of house cleaning. Would you please raise your hand using the hand icon located in the GoToWebinar control panel to let me know that you can hear me? Okay, I see hands. Thank you very much. Next, during this webinar, you will be on mute. But should you have any questions during the discussion, please go ahead and enter them in the questions field within the control panel. At the end of the webinar, we will take time to answer as many questions as possible, and those that aren't addressed will be answered in a follow-up blog post on Percona's MySQL performance blog. In addition, I'll make sure that everybody receives a recording of this webinar within 48 hours. So with that said, I'd like to thank you for attending today's webinar, Upgrading to MySQL 5.6 Best Practices, presented by CEO and founder Peter Zaitsev. With that said, I'd like to turn the floor over to Peter. Go ahead, Peter. Hey, uh, thank you, Elisa. So, good morning, everyone, or wherever day, time of day it is in the place around you. Today we'll talk about uh, upgrading uh, MySQL uh, to MySQL 5.6 and uh, more specifically best practices around that. Now in this webinar specifically uh, it's going to focus on the MySQL 5.6 and Percona 5.6. If you're interested in it about more kind of general practice and upgrades you can uh, check out my older webinar which I did a couple of years ago uh, uh, which has both slides and recording uh, available at Percona website. In this uh, webinar, we look at some uh, general thoughts about upgrades. We look into MySQL 5.6 specifics, and I will also briefly cover some tools which can uh, help you with MySQL upgrade process. The first uh, question you may ask: Hey, uh, should I really upgrade to MySQL 5.6? What are the wonderful features? And I'm here to tell you that that's not what we are going to cover in this webinar. If you're interested in MySQL 5.6 uh, features to decide wherever you want uh, to upgrade uh, to that where, where it has enough advantages, check out another webinar uh, which uh, I did a while back uh, of, of about MySQL 5.6 uh, advantages. And if you're interested in Percona server, where, which I would guess uh, you quite uh, may, uh, check out Percona Server webinar, which uh, outlines what kind of advantages the using Percona Server has compared to using stock MySQL 5.6. Now, let's talk in general. What are could be the general reasons for you to uh, look at upgrade? And uh, one big and uh, common feature, uh, common reason is uh, using new features. A lot of developers I sp uh, speak about, they think in about their development facing features. Oh, is there some new query language, some new functions, or some uh, other things, which only part uh, of, a, uh, of a reason. Uh, in a lot of uh, MySQL versions, and specifically in MySQL 5.6, there are a lot of new features for operations. Right? This is something which your operations people will appreciate, such as crash safe replication or ability to move tables uh, between the MySQL, uh, uh, MySQL instances. All of those may uh, uh, be a good reason for you to upgrade even though there's a not developer uh, fixing features, developing facing features. Security is also very uh, uh, good reason because new versions or, or I would say old versions of MySQL sooner or later, later they stop getting security fixes and if you want to be secure you need to stay uh, reasonably current. In a lot of cases, uh, we see upgrades are caused by looking for better performance and better scalability. Better scalability in terms of number of connections, in terms of a more powerful hardware such as CPUs with large amount of cores, large amount of memory, uh, support for high performance storage such as the solid state drives. All uh, MySQL new versions, they uh, generally have a better uh, properties uh, in this regard. And I will also think about it, uh, staying reasonably current. Because if you think about that, uh, uh, in the world, both MySQL DBA uh, as well as uh, uh, support staff in the companies, they tend to uh, be, uh, know 
the reasonably recent versions much better. If you're looking at to find somebody who really is uh, very familiar with how things have been in MySQL 3.23, well, good luck. Most people uh, well forgot about what uh, specifically was working in that release and not. So there is a good reason to stay on a release which is reasonably current and well understood by their uh, people. Now, there are also reasons to stay on the old release. Why? Well, because upgrading can be risky. I mean, there is a chance that upgrade will uh, break some of your application and you will have spent a lot of time resolving the problems or even get a downtime. Uh, upgrading can also be expensive depending on what your company processes are and how much you want to minimize that said risk. Updates may really cost a lot of uh, man months and sometimes uh, man years. And sometimes it may not be worth it for uh, legacy applications. Some legacy applications may be uh, old and they are no more developed, kept kind of where humming alone there is uh, no changes. Maybe you can just uh, isolate them so they uh, from security standpoint and keep them with some uh, all the MySQL releases if they are not comparable and developers have left. I have seen a number of such uh, applications for, the, for which staying on uh, MySQL uh, 4.1, for example, was uh, prudent until the application itself uh, is planned to retire in a few years. The other question, you may wonder, uh, how safe is MySQL 5.6? Should you upgrade to that now, or is it a time to wait uh, for longer time? Well, MySQL 5.6 was GA for almost a year now, and a lot of uh, those initial bugs which get discovered uh, after the GA release uh, have been resolved. Since MySQL 5.6 release, there have been almost 2,000 bugs fixed, so there have been a lot of work and focus at the Oracle team uh, fixing MySQL 5.6 bugs. Now, uh, having said that, I would say if you are planning to use some new features such as uh, global transaction IDs replication, parallel replication, InnoDB full text search, memcache plugin for uh, the InnoDB, those are very new features and they have been tested by uh, relatively few MySQL users. Because, uh, to be frank, majority of users run MySQL 5.6 as better, more performing, more scalable MySQL 5.5, right? Not really relying on its new features too much. And if you're looking at those new features, I would be careful watching bugs about them and test things very carefully because there may be dragons. Another thing with uh, MySQL 5.6, which proved to its uh, maturity, is what uh, Facebook has reported most, uh, uh, moved most of their uh, uh, workload to MySQL uh, 5.6 uh, at this point. You are not Facebook and your workload is very likely very different from, from theirs, but it still counts when somebody is running uh, many thousands of uh, MySQL instances with, uh, with MySQL. Now, if you look at the overall user base, I think about 10% uh, of, uh, uh, of users uh, which are running that. And this is skewed towards more of a more power users which indeed need those 5-6 uh, features or uh, performance uh, in scalability. Such a relatively low number, I think, comes from the fact that uh, there are uh, no major uh, Linux distributions have uh, moved to MySQL 5.6 yet and uh, a lot of uh, non-power users uh, would use this channel for get MySQL. I also would point out what MySQL or what Percona Server 5.6 is available and was available for uh, a few months so if you are using Percona Server and have been waiting for a kind of version of MySQL 5.6 which was improved and enhanced by Percona, well, it, it's, it's ready out there. So, is it a time uh, for you to upgrade? Well, uh, to sum it up, if you're running MySQL 5.1 uh, earlier, you uh, may have a very good reason to do that. 
started uh, uh, the, in the uh, as of the end of the last year, MySQL 5.1 has been uh, made uh, end of life uh, by Oracle. And what that means is that there are no more bug fixes promised, even, even if it comes to crash bugs uh, and uh, security bug fixes. We have been pretty lucky in this regard because uh, there is, was a huge uh, a significant batch of security fixes done to number of uh, MySQL products uh, in December, and uh, we were very lucky what those made into uh, my last kind of MySQL 5.1 release. There, uh, a future uh, of the security feature uh, fixes for MySQL is an, uh, is uncertain. At the same time, I would mention what we do still uh, continue to support MySQL 5.1 as well as uh, Percona 5.1 as covered by Percona support and we will provi continue provide their uh, bug fixes and uh, security uh, fixes uh, uh, to our support customers. If you are running on MySQL 5.5 it is still going to be uh, supported for now a few years. If you look at this kind of the lowest uh, baseline, there is the most active, what's called a premier support from Oracle, will be available until uh, December uh, 2015, right? So we have uh, at least there are two years of uh, uh, runway, and there is going to be extended support with more security bug fixes, uh, uh, bug fixes through that. So if you are running on uh, uh, MySQL 5.5 and it's working well for you and are not experiencing any performance issues, then uh, you should ask yourself, does MySQL 5.6 give you any gain and wherever, uh, how simple and uh, safe is it for you to upgrade? If uh, the answer here is such what uh, upgrades have been generally painful for you, right, uh, and you are risk averse and you're not seeing much gains from MySQL 5.6, well, maybe it's a, uh, you can uh, wait for some time before making that jump. Another question which I get asked a lot is wherever it's safe to be jumping over major release. Uh, release. Is it safe to go from MySQL 5.1 to MySQL 5.6? What is about from 5.0 to 5.6? And uh, the thing here is what the single version jump, let's say from 5.5 to 5.6, is uh, uh, tested the most actively. This is sort of the assuming way of upgrade what everybody tests, right? And this is the uh, uh, best way to proceed if it fits into your uh, upgrade schedule. If you want to do those MySQL major version upgrade every uh, couple of years or so. Uh, we see also a lot of people jumping over one release. We have seen people going from MySQL 5.0 to 5.5 and now uh, we see Facebook for example going from MySQL 5.1 to 5.6 directly bypassing uh, MySQL 5.5. Though, in both cases, these are heavily modified Facebook improved MySQL releases. Now, you know, jumping over one, uh, one release is relatively, uh, uh, is, is relatively common, even though um, much less common than having one uh, major uh, release upgrade. But uh, more than that, uh, you will be in uh, really minority or a few, very few people jump over, uh, over two releases. In any case, if you're doing that, I would I suggest you to uh, test things carefully. Another question is how would you go about using those new exciting features in MySQL? And uh, for example, using new syntax in the queries or relying on some advanced optimizer improvements which haven't been uh, available before. My approach to that is to really uh, try to uh, stage uh, things, upgrade to uh, to a major release first, and then try to roll uh, in their in, in new features uh, one by one. So, uh, if something uh, doesn't work out as expected, it's a lot easier for you to to roll back uh, using one big feature instead of. Uh, many of them. So for example, uh, we see a lot of people uh, looking to upgrade to MySQL uh, 
or 5.6 and then later consider if you want to use uh, a GTID replication instead of trying to move with GTID uh, something that may not be uh, experienced very well. Let's go through a number of worries which you may have uh, in your uh, upgrade proce uh, process. What things do we really thinking about uh, than the upgrading. The biggest worry for people, I think, is stability. What if the new version I will upgrade will start crashing or uh, stall and not service my queries at all? Or in the worst case scenario, not only crash, but also cor corrupt the data uh, on the disk, so uh, the, you wouldn't be able to resolve that uh, with the crash. And this is a, probably the biggest worry a lot of us have. The second uh, issue which I have to consider is on disk data format changes. And on disk data format cha changes is fine, right? It happens silently, you don't have to think about that unless we want to downgrade. And upgrading, I always like to be thinking about the downgrade possibility. There is something which may go wrong and I want to be able to go back uh, if it happens. Changes to the data format may prevent us from doing uh, so, and that always has to be considered. Performance and, st and scalability, uh, that is uh, another uh, the important uh, piece. Uh, we want to make sure what the new version works as, uh, of, as quickly, right, or as, uh, is as fast as performing as the old one and we often would need that both on the low concurrency right then you have a single query performs at least as good as well as uh, on the high concurrency. We also would often be uh, thinking about their uh, re replication which has to work fine between all the new release because in majority of cases for large-scale installations we are going to be using their uh, replication during the upgrade uh, the process. And then considering replication, we want to uh, make sure it runs stable, it doesn't crash us, as well as the data is propagated correctly. So we are not replicating, let's say, from MySQL 5.1 to 5.6, and the data which made it to 5.6 is different from what we have in the 5.5 master. That would not be uh, uh, acceptable. We also have to be thinking about replication in the reverse direction, right, for rollback reasons. If something goes wrong, we may want to, uh, after we upgraded our master to MySQL 5.6, we may want to be able to go back, uh, switch into uh, master back to 5.5 node, but for that we need replication in the opposite direction to work uh, properly. This is, by the way, another reason we uh, try not to use any new features until uh, their uh, upgrade is complete and validated. Because if you are going to use uh, new features in the release, then uh, that will make your uh, replication incompatible uh, in the reverse direction in the majority of cases. Then you also have to uh, worry about changes to the settings and variables both in terms of naming, because some variables change their names and some old names which you may have been using for many years back are no more supported, as well as defaults. Changes to defaults may uh, somewhat change their uh, behavior and cause performance regressions or some other side effects. So we have all those worries about what can go wrong in terms of upgrade and what you have to consider. Uh, how do we really deal with that? And really here we had a, a large uh, range of approaches. Right? You can go through uh, very careful testing. Uh, some uh, uh, companies indeed spend countless uh, amount of hours and many months of testing and validation of MySQL 5.6 and have very elaborate process to make the upgrade very low risk. There is another approach where you would say, hey, MySQL has reasonably uh, good upgrade track record. Let me just upgrade my binaries to MySQL 5.6 and, well, if something um, goes wrong, then I will can uh, resolve the problems as I, uh, as I appear, right? First approach is very conservative and then one, well, uh, I will call it trackless even though 
I uh, have seen uh, a lot of successes where people just plug in MySQL 5.6 out there, start their application or like, run just basic MySQL upgrade script and it works and they wonder what is all the fuss about. Upgrading MySQL is anything, is just trivial. And then a question for you is wherever uh, you should do it yourself or wherever you should uh, uh, get uh, help from your support provider uh, or a consulting company like Turcona or some others. And it is truly doable. There is a lot of information on upgrades uh, available. The MySQL manual has a pretty good section uh, covering the basic uh, issues as well as there is a uh, whole bunch of information uh, including presentations, blog posts and so on and so forth. At the same time, I would say what uh, upgrading is the situation where support and consulting is very good uh, 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 to consider and there may be a lot of value in that, especially if you have a very business critical application which just cannot go down or cannot lose data. The reason for that is uh, the company re uh, often transitions single application right, or transition to MySQL, uh, to new MySQL version only once. It's really where you have experienced people in the team who had done upgrade to MySQL 5.6 multiple times. That is what consultants may be for who already worked with a number of client, customers before you and they know what exactly can go wrong and if it goes wrong they can help to resolve the situation in their uh, in the shortest uh, shortest times uh, time possible. Now I mentioned about the upgrade and what we uh, often use uh, replication for upgrade. Right? When does that make sense? Well, the, it's most important to, uh, uh, for the cases when either you are dealing with a large amount of data, so running uh, drop-in replacement, even let's say running MySQL upgrade is not going to be an option. It will just take too long time to rebuild the table. Or you're having something like an always-on application where you just cannot take MySQL down for a few days. Uh, or for a few hours to do the upgrade. In some other, let's say, 9 to 5 applications, maybe you don't need that and maybe you just can go through the upgrade on the single MySQL instance. Then the uh, general approach to using replication for upgrade would be to upgrade Slate first to uh, MySQL 5.6 and then you would uh, test if the replication is uh, uh, indeed working properly, is not breaking, not giving you uh, a lot of errors in the error logs and the data is in sync and then uh, uh, you may uh, switch your uh, switch your master to uh, to, uh, to MySQL 5.6. In a lot of cases I like keeping uh, one of the MySQL 5.5 slaves uh, if it's possible for uh, for your applications, but sometimes you just have to uh, bite, the, uh, bite the bullet. I would say uh, the, the kind of replication in reverse order 5.6 to 5.5, right, from high version to lower version have been relatively troublesome in MySQL 5.5 compared to previous releases. We had a uh, number of cases then even uh, without changes to, uh, uh, to a workload, a replication wouldn't work. This is not something which is supported, right? Typically, uh, you would see replica uh, so support replication goes from, from uh, lower version uh, from high version, uh, from low version to high version, right? Not other way around. But in practice, that worked very well from MySQL 5.0 to 5.1 or from 5.1 to 5.5, right? 5.6 is, uh, is worse in this regard. Upgrading the data, how do we do that? Well, uh, we can do that uh, in place where we would essentially just write MySQL upgrade field which check and repair rebuild some data as well as our uh, privilege tables. Uh, we can do that. Uh, it will take time. We can also do dump and restore using uh, MySQL dump or uh, the MyDumper which can do that in parallel and as such uh, much faster. Uh, in general I would say uh, dumping and restoring data if you have a time that has some, uh, if you have a time that has some, uh, some benefits because that allows you to migrate 
to the new uh, data format settings. Like you would uh, be able to move to now default in a new file per table. You can create a table with the new checksums uh, format with uh, uh, with uh, let's say Barracuda in a new file format and some uh, other benefits which you uh, wouldn't have an option if you just run an in-place upgrade. The table will remain in the uh, old. Uh, format unless you uh, and uh, unless you rebuild them, but that obviously uh, takes time. I especially recommend dump and restore uh, if you're jumping through uh, through versions. If you have been doing multiple of those in place upgrade with just MySQL upgrade, and your data, for example, have been originally created with MySQL 4.1, and you just or rolling forward through that, uh, there is a risk with that because there can be some uh, not very well supported features used inside a database such as very old data type formats or something like that. Let's now go to more of MySQL 5 6 specifics and what is the most important with MySQL 5 6. Few basics. First, when you do an upgrade, you want to make sure your server was shut down clear, uh, clearly, right? N never with any version try to perform an upgrade after you crashed MySQL uh, because uh, you know, the, this, um, th this is not a very well tested path when you have a new server version uh, replying the transaction log created by the old version. Right? The second I think what you must run MySQL upgrade for uh, MySQL uh, 5.6. Now, even if you have done dump and reload, you still need to run MySQL upgrade so your privileged tables can be enhanced to include the, the new columns. If you don't do that, then the server may crash or refuse to work with some of their uh, new uh, pr privileges right, and statements which grant them. The second important thing is to review and validate your MyCNF. Some settings you will just need to clean up because they're not needed anymore. For example, because the match defaults in the new MySQL 5.6 settings. It's also possible what some settings may not be supported uh, anymore. Right? There are a few of them in the MySQL 5.6, such as setting the, uh, the log, uh, slow log name which has to be done, which was deprecated a few releases back and now finally removed MySQL 5.6. The good way to do that, uh, even if running MySQL, you can run this MySQL D minus health with your bows and then uh, check the return code. This will make MySQL to validate my CNF file, ensure it still recognizes all the variables and it will either give you return code zero, in which case it tells, hey, MySQL can start with this MySQL file, or it will return non-zero code, which corresponds to some, uh, some problem variables, and it also will print what exactly variable it doesn't recognize. Let's talk about MySQL 5.6 stability. In general, if you are running MySQL 5.6 uh, uh, workloads, MySQL 5.6 have been uh, pretty stable uh, at this point in time. I wouldn't be fearful some, oh my gosh, would MySQL 5.6 start just randomly crashing for my uh, workload? That would be uh, pretty uh, unlikely if you would uh, see that. What in terms of most important changes to the data format? The most important changes to the data format are changes to the time sum and daytime column, which now supports uh, fractional seconds. What that means is, uh, if you create the new tables in MySQL 5.6 or alter the old uh, tables to rebuild them, the, the timestamp and daytime format may change. That means it may not be supported by MySQL 5.5 uh, uh, 5, 5 anymore. My general approach to that is until I'm absolutely sure I'm not going to downgrade to MySQL 5.5, uh, uh, in place of the same data, I'm not going uh, uh, by replacing the binaries. I'm not going to run any DDL with alter tables because alter tables can always change something unexpected, which may not be recognized by the old version. Another thing is 
NADB pay checks uh, NADB checksum algorithm CRC32. If you enable that and uh, uh, for your new table space, this uh, table space won't be able to re re be read by MySQL 5.5. Also, if you use NADB page size different than default 16 kilobytes, then uh, that won't be compatible with uh, all the MySQL 5.5. Uh, five five binaries. Now, if you are upgrading from MySQL five one or before, you also should uh, know the fair amount of changes which have been done in MySQL five five due, uh, due to the to data format. There have been a fair amount of them, including things like um, uh, the change buffer and in the changes, right? So, uh, I would not assume of uh, MySQL before 5.5 five being able to work with a uh, database uh, which was modified by MySQL 5.6. In terms of functionality, well, in terms of functionality, we don't see a lot of queries being being broken, right? Query was just working well for MySQL 5.5 and it terminates with some syntax error, right, or returns the wrong results in MySQL 5.6. That's not, uh, or dif different results in MySQL 5.6. We haven't seen that happening uh, a lot. There are a few changes to the functionality which you have to consider. Uh, the year two type, which uh, have been deprecated and it will kind of automatically change now to year four when you uh, uh, alter their mm, tables. Uh, also, implicit default for uh, timestamp tables uh, was uh, deprecated. It still will work for them, but you will uh, get some uh, messages in the error log file. Uh, things to consider, as with any MySQL version upgrade, is uh, reserved keywords. Each MySQL version adds new reserved keywords, and that uh, you know, breaks some queries where people are not very creative. Uh, naming their identifiers for something which just becomes uh, used. We have seen a lot of uh, people being beat by uh, the new security measures, right? Uh, uh, now, in MySQL 5.6, if you pass the password through command like client, like MySQL minus minus user X and minus minus password Y, then those all give another warning uh, even you run the script, which can break a whole bunch of their uh, cron jobs by uh, or, or some other scripts which are checking the output and which are not expecting that warning message to uh, to appear out there. And I provided the bug link for that. Now let's talk about performance and uh, and scalability. What uh, what to worry about? Uh, as I mentioned before, MySQL 5.6 uh, actually scales with number of um, the connections and number of CPU cores much better than the previous versions. But at the same time, that comes at some cost in a low concurrency workloads. We have seen 5, 10 percent uh, uh, lower performance of MySQL 5.6 for single thread, sometimes even more. Bunch of that uh, is uh, related to, to performance schema, which became default in MySQL 5.6. But which you can uh, which you can disable if you are uh, are not using that. This regression in performance can be especially uh, important in case of replication if you are relying on the replication speed a lot because uh, by default replication is single thread in MySQL 5.6 even though parallel replication is available for some niche use cases. And I think. Uh, is the optimizer. There have been major improvements in the uh, optimizer in 5.6. This sounds like a good thing, but well, that also exactly what caused a lot of problems because all optimizer improvements comes with something stops working or as you expect it to work and some queries uh, break. So, uh, take uh, a special attention on that to validate what your query plans are still what you uh, expense uh, to them, expect them to do. Some of this stuff is also related to the persistent statistics, which are enabled 
and default now with InnoDB uh, starts persistent uh, uh, variable, which will uh, can can cause outdated stats to be used or stats can be refreshed in a different ways at different times than uh, than it was before. Though it is a good change because. Uh, in the end, it gives us a lot more stable statistics and a lot more stable execution plan, but that may be something you need to get used to. There are a lot of uh, optimizer uh, features which uh, kick in by default, you don't have to uh, do anything, and some of them work even for relatively simple queries, such as batch key access, uh, multi-range uh, uh, reads. And these are uh, great optimizations, especially if uh, uh, you have data which is much larger uh, than memory. At the same time, for some queries, uh, it will cause slowdown for in-memory workloads because it kind of does more, uh, more work to optimize access pattern uh, for on this layout, which uh, tends to be just uh, more work in memory, which has uh, different uh, access pattern. Replication. So we uh, spoke of replication which uh, from 5, five to 5, 6 works well. From 5, 6 to 5 uh, can have issues which is uh, can be problematic to use uh, with rollback. I have uh, provided a bug number which is one of the cases where that uh, uh, attract. A lot of problems what you have seen so far they have to do with uh, row-based replication and uh, this uh, uh, replication of timestamp stamp columns. If you're using statement level replication and, you, uh, and enable all the right options, uh, then uh, uh, it can work quite well. In terms of advanced uh, uh, replication, GTID, this is relatively, mm, uh, is not very commonly used. Uh, uh, in this case. This is kind of relatively complicated uh, uh, feature and it also unfortunately was designed in a way uh, uh, you would have to sort of shut down your the whole replicating cluster, change everything to use GTID and start it back, which is not uh, acceptable for a lot of many always own applications which need that feature the most. You can do uh, uh, something as uh, set up a separate new like replication cluster and use external replication such as tungsten to uh, bridge the replication of your non-GTID to GTID uh, cluster, but that is a pretty painful, right, and not a lot of people uh, want to do that. Parallel replication also is not very commonly used, partly uh, I think because it's quite limited, right? The, it, uh, you have, oh, can only uh, replicate in parallel per, uh, per schema and uh, not every application benefits from uh, this optimization a lot. Changes to defaults. Right. Well, I would say changes in default in my uh, in my school uh, five six had been very good. A lot of uh, defaults now are much more sensible in terms of what they would work by default to the large amount of workloads, and also their after con uh, configuration have been set for uh, for many parameters. That means you will have to change uh, less parameters. When you are upgrading though probably you already have a MyCNF file which you're going to use. So what about uh, important changes? In the buffer pool instances, for more or less, uh, for uh, reasonably sized e installations, the number of energy buffer pool instances now eight, which usually is a good thing and helps with high concurrency workloads, but that uh, can uh, also impact their uh, single thread uh, performance uh, a little bit further. In a file per table is default uh, by default and it is a good change in general for many workloads but if you have many tables uh, you may have performance regression because of that use more space and also significantly slower temporary NGV tables creation because now temporary NGV tables will have to create and um, discover table space all the time which is 
uh, which is expensive. The same applies to any actually other transient in NADB tables. If you just creating and dropping tables all the time, it becomes slower with an NADB file per table enabled. In NADB all blocks time now by default 1000, which is a good change. It helps us with have a buffer pool scan resistant, but there have been some workloads which will uh, degrade if it's change. Right, so if that's the case, then you can change it back to uh, to the to zero uh, and the, to restore the old behavior. There are security changes uh, to defaults. Now I'm hoping what you don't have any old passwords anymore. Right, those old passwords correspond to 4.1 or pre pre point point one uh, format and a and a client libraries which are. Uh, out of use for years right now, but if you uh, but if you do, then you should know it, what the authentication with those old password is now disabled by by default with secure R uh, of equals to on. And uh, my advice would be uh, not to uh, enable this option that because the authentication for old passwords is very insecure, but rather check your uh, tables for user accounts which have old password hashes, right? If you have uh, any of those short uh, password hashes with a old password uh, format and you just need to um, set a password again to use their, uh, the new hash. So what uh, we should do with MySQL 5.6 uh, to maximize our chances for downgrade uh, for downgrade compatibility. Well, we want to have InnoDB check some algorithm set to InnoDB. We also want to make sure from replication standpoint, right, uh, or uh, point in time recovery standpoint, to, to make sure our binary log is MySQL 5.5 compatible, which is done by setting bin log checksums to know and also using this uh, the option of log, log bin use v1 events to use all, all the formats which MySQL 5.5 can uh, can recognize. Uh, preparing for this talk, I also spoke to the uh, Yishinori about the, his experiences at Facebook and say what kind of couple of points he would like to share. He actually has a great presentation about uh, this at Percona Live 2000. Uh, 14. If you are attending that show, that will be one of the great presentations to, uh, to attend. A uh, few things he told me is what is uh, for them set option uh, variable was uh, uh, set option syntax, which is not supported in MySQL 5.6 anymore, was a problem because they used some uh, old uh, Java connector, which explicitly would use that for setting variables, and that had to be upgraded in order to use. Uh, MySQL 5.6. Also, this weird uh, new variable introduced called EQ range index dive limit caused problems because it impacted a lot of um, a lot of query plans which use in conditions with a la large number of uh, number la large number of elements, which is quite common for some applications. You can check out where uh, 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 Yoshinori's post about that with through provided links. Uh, Yoshinori's experience was also that there is a lot more optimizer changes in uh, uh, 5.1 to 5.6 compared to the previous upgrade from 5.0 to 5.1. Well, not a surprise, MySQL 5.6 was indeed very optimizer focused release. And his feedback is also that GTID is not uh, designed with real uh, world operations in mind. Because again, well, uh, something that you have to uh, really shut everything down and upgrade is not very practical on a large scale. Here is a bug courtesy by, uh, here is a list of uh, courtesy of uh, Valery Kravchuk. Uh, he is a person in Pircona who really uh, checks a lot of uh, bugs. I have asked him to provide a list of the most relevant bugs what MySQL, people upgrading to MySQL 5.6 uh, would be interested about. Uh, here is the list. I, I won't go in details, but uh, you can uh, explore that after you uh, download the slides. Now let's talk uh, briefly about the Percona Server 5.6. 
Now, if your Connoisseur 5.6, as well as your previous Connoisseur releases, it includes all the features on MySQL 5.5, right? So there is no uh, no features uh, e from Community MySQL 5.5 which we decide to throw away, right? So it is uh, truly comparable in this case. And then on the top of this MySQL 5.6, we add a low number of Percona improvements. Some from performance and scalability focus, uh, ease of use, transparency, and we are also adding equivalents to many uh, MySQL enterprise proprietary features, such as the thread pool uh, plugin uh, exists in, uh, in Percona Server 5.6 or uh, pluggable authentication is another example. Uh, there are uh, the good documentation for upgrading it to Gracona 5.6, you can check out uh, that link provided. And I would uh, point out uh, one important thing is what uh, we have changed some option names to be more uh, user friendly in MySQL 5.6, so check it out. And also MySQL 5.6 introduces number of feature equivalents for what was done in Gracona Server 5.5 before. For those features, our approach has been to use uh, Oracle implementation and Oracle's uh, variable naming unless our implementation is, is uh, substantially better or different. So you may be uh, needed to change uh, the settings from old uh, pure corner names to the new and official introduced in uh, MySQL 5.6. Now, finally, let me cover briefly some software which can help you through your, uh, through your upgrade uh, process. Percona Extra Backup. Uh, this is a very uh, important tool uh, for upgrade. Why? Well, because you always want to make backups of your database before upgrading. Because chances are there's always something which can uh, go wrong. And the Vircona Extra Backup is an open source uh, software which can uh, help you to do a ba uh, their online backup with as little impact and overhead as possible. It also does a binary level backup so uh, it is as, uh, as efficient as, uh, as it is possible. My Dumper. I mentioned that before, uh, that's helpful both for backup uh, restore, you can see it, import and export, if you are looking to get the uh, logical backup like in text. And this is a, a very good tool for uh, resolving some uh, data uh, incompatibilities which you may have with uh, a direct in-place upgrade. Pircona Toolkit also has a number of wonderful tools which you uh, may be helpful for you during the upgrade. PT Upgrade is a tool for upgrade validation. This is exactly designed the tool so you can uh, take a look at some queries and uh, compare how they behave on 5.5 and 5.6 instances in terms of their execution time, result, any warnings they generate. It's a uh, it's a wonderful tool for basic compatibility checking. We also use PT Table Checksum to test what the replication is working uh, properly, both in forward and reverse ways, right? So what you would normally test is to make sure there is no errors or excessive warnings we don't understand in, uh, in the error logs, as well as run PT Table Checksum uh, uh, between the instance of a different versions and ensure replication propagates data correctly, right? That has to be, uh, if not, then there is maybe something non-comparable in replication we have to think how to deal with that. PT Table Sync is a comp uh, uh, companion tool which helps us to fix and resolve those differences. PT Query Digest is also a very uh, important tool which we can use uh, on our production workload before and after to validate performance of the queries. What you usually want to make sure is what uh, there are no queries, no important queries which have become uh, substantially worse. Because what often happens during the optimizer phases, auto uh, optimizer uh, changes out of your maybe thousands of different query times, 
couple may become substantially slower, maybe like 10 times slower, sometimes even 100 times slower. And these are the cases which can uh, impact some uh, functionality in your application which is, um, can be uh, hard to catch otherwise. Vircona playback is another very helpful tool for upgrade. What it does, it allows us to do performance testing at different concurrency level using your live queries, your uh, real queries from live traffic or uh, their uh, MySQL log. And uh, it is great because in addition to checking uh, the queries of a single concurrency with PT uh, upgrade, we often want to ensure there is no concurrency related issues because there may be something. There are changes to how locking works, right? How deadlocks are detected, uh, and something else. And there's some concurrency in some performance problems only show up on the high concurrency level. So you want to test that. Finally, uh, we have a new tool, uh, a web tool for a change uh, in our family. It's called Percona Cloud Tools, and it's available currently as a, uh, as a free better. So how do we use this tool for, uh, for upgrades, right, with the upgrade? Well, the idea is what you install the, uh, this tool before the upgrade, and then for upgraded instances, you can check out your queries before and after uh, upgrade, and you want to pay attention to those queries individually and see how different queries have been impacted because some queries may be running much faster because of a new MySQL 5.6 implementation and some becoming slower. Here is an example of what uh, I did for my the test system upgrade for MySQL 5.5 which is the first uh, set of data running CISBench and the second one. Uh, you can see what in this case uh, Strangely uh, enough, we can have uh, see uh, all the queries which actually became came a little bit mm, uh, uh, slower, right? In uh, in MySQL five uh, uh, five uh, uh, five six, sometimes you will see those queries in the uh, in the different orders saying, hey, well that query was uh, query number twenty for MySQL five five. Now it's query number one causing the most load on your system. Well, then that means most likely that query suffered serious regression and you need to take a look at that. Here is where uh, highlights what I would normally uh, look at uh, in terms of queries using this uh, same tool is I would look at the, both the average time and the 95 percentile time. You can see in this case uh, we have a minor uh, regressions of maybe uh, 10 percent uh, essentially uh, across the board, right, for all the queries. And that applies both for average time and 95 percentile time. Sometimes it's, uh, it's going to be different, especially if you have some optimizer glitches, chances are what it's not your average query uh, time which was impacted significantly, but it's your 95 percentile time, because some of those uh, rare queries, some of those outliers, have been impacted disproportionately and you want to find that and resolve the situation for your uh, application to be in good shape. I also would suggest to check out uh, the metrics for uh, the, the available for queries and some of those would, uh, would require you uh, running per corner, per corner server. For example, if you would find what the, uh, you see a lot more rows examined for a query than before, that is a warning side for me, or if you would see uh, a lot more I.O. Uh, being done, uh, then that uh, also can be very uh, warring side. We have seen some of those uh, batch key access uh, and some of the new optimization actually would cause more I.O., not less, in, uh, in some of those cases, and that can have uh, a significant impact to your system performance uh, or stability. So, well, with Percona Cloud Tools, there is uh, really also much more uh, what you can do. I only show them as they apply to uh, upgrade uh, in MySQL, but I would encourage you to visit Vadim's webinar on February 12th. He will go in uh, a lot more details and other use cases for this tool, 
as well as I would just encourage you to get a free beta account and check it out. Also, uh, we have uh, the early bird rate which ends uh, very soon. If you are planning to attend your Kona Live My School conference and Expo, that is a great time to uh, uh, to register. I would uh, uh, highly encourage you to do that. Uh, this conference, uh, this year conference schedule looks just uh, amazing. And uh, that's uh, it for me. Uh, thank you, and uh, remember you have some uh, upgrade issues, Kircon is happy to help you through support and professional services. Okay, Peter, um, thank you very much. Audience, if you'd like to ask questions of Peter, please go ahead and enter them into the questions panel in the GoToWebinar control panel. And Peter, we already have questions, so I'll go ahead and read you the first one. Sure. When Okay. When upgrading the replica first, should replication be switched to mixed or statement-based for a fair test, or would row-based replication be generally sufficient? Well, um, well then you are upgrading the, uh, the replica. I think if you're, if you're using uh, a row replication in production, you usually would like to, uh, to stick to that with, uh, uh, with, uh, with a with version uh, upgrade. Uh, in general, uh, as uh, assuming there are uh, no glitches with those uh, format changes, the raw replication works better between upgrades because it's uh, less reliant on the subtle differences how different statements may be executed between different MySQL versions. Okay, next question. What if I have very large tables, say 60 gigabytes? What will happen when I run MySQL underscore upgrade? Wouldn't it take the system off for a very long period of time? Well, uh, that is a good point, right? So first of all, is MySQL upgrade is not going to be to rebuild every single table. It will only uh, rebuild some of the tables. And there is... Uh, is an option or I think you can uh, check what tables it's going to rebuild without it actually uh, doing that if you're, uh, if you're curious. Now, this is exactly the reason why to use replication for upgrade. So you can set up a replication, you would upgrade uh, your node with MySQL upgrade even if it takes, you know, a couple of hours, right, for your large table. Uh, and then you can do, uh, do that with essentially node downtime just by uh, uh, switching to upgraded slave uh, uh, when you're ready. Okay, next question. Do you have any experience or know of any issues with using semi-synchronous slave replication in MySQL 5.6? Are many folks using it? Well, uh, uh, semi-sync replication uh, Introduced in 5.5, right? But it uh, didn't get uh, get a lot of use, and uh, essentially because of some additional performance issues, uh, which have uh, uh, originated uh, with it. Uh, I can't uh, honestly tell uh, yet too much uh, about upgrading uh, this feature in MySQL 5.6. Okay. Um, apart from the issue of requiring database downtime to convert to GTID, are there other problems with it once it is running in a new replication cluster? Well, uh, if you look at the uh, GTID, uh, that is a relatively new feature. And uh, I think it uh, became a lot better for the last year. We have lots of bugs fixed with uh, uh, a GTID, but I would say it is still uh, less mature than their uh, conventional replication. Okay, and then there's a follow-up question. So, um, if you could stop your environment, do you recommend switching to replication with GTIDs? Yeah, well, I would say there are uh, attractive reasons to do that in terms of the uh, features it provides in, uh, in terms of promoting the slaves and so on and so forth. But there is also their, uh, the, the maturity uh, the maturity question uh, that in this regard. I think it all depends about your risk tolerance and amount of testing uh, that you can uh, you can put uh, 
input into that. So I would say majority of the MySQL 5.6 installations are not using GTID replication at this point. Okay, and we have time for one more question. And please don't fret if we didn't get to your question. I will be sure to send Peter the list and he will address them in a follow-up blog post. So the last question is, could you explain once again why MySQL upgrade is necessary even while dumping and reloading? Okay, why MySQL upgrade is uh, necessary when dumping and reloading, right? Because MySQL upgrade essentially does two things. Uh, first, it changes their uh, tables then with uh, some uh, unsupported types or uh, new formats uh, discovered. And then it also changes some tables in the MySQL database especially their tables which contain privileges, adding the columns or doing other changes to support uh, the new privileges which added in the new version. For example, in MySQL 5.6 there was a password expiration uh, policies are added which require a new column in those tables and they cannot work if a table doesn't exist and in some cases it's, uh, uh, it's uh, have been seen even to crash the server if you use grants and don't have tables updated properly. Okay. Peter, thank you very much for your time today. And audience, I hope that you enjoyed today's webinar. Please join us for future webinars. And you can check out the list on uh, percona.com. I'll be adding quite a few more in the next few weeks. Um, again, thank you very much. And have a wonderful day, evening, or uh, morning, depending on where you're calling in from. Thank you again, Peter. Yes, thank you everyone. Bye.